What is up, players? It's Warboss Tap and it's Mug. Welcome to a video on how to paint a Cador Man O War Shock Trooper for the War Machine board game, or miniatures war game, rather. This is what our guy's gonna look like after the first painting session with him. He's very glossy and shiny because we just put a glaze down on him or a wash slash glaze. So he's he's gonna dry pretty matte eventually, but uh, for now he's gonna be kind of shiny. So the colors you're gonna use are Mephiston Red. Balthazar Gold, and for this step at least we've got our Lead Belcher. So red, gold, and silver are our main colors. Everything else we use, all the other colors are just going to kind of supplement that. So to help us get those nice colors in and to build effective shadows we're going to use Abaddon Black. And for the shade itself I'm basically just using Rhinox Hide and watering it down, thinning it down rather with Lamy and Medium. So again here's what our guy's gonna look like. Don't be afraid if, um, if, if, if it looks kinda weird to you, don't worry. Believe me, when it, it dries, Lamy and Medium is, a, is such a great product and it's gonna look really really good. Alright, so the first thing I do is after I built it, I primed it all in white just to get a good initial base color down. What I have to do now is go back over with the red primer, or now that I have an airbrush, spray it red. But because I didn't have an airbrush when I started filming this video, I went with, I believe it was Army Painter's Dragon Red. And I basically just sprayed the entire model uh, in two coats. I tried to get a nice even coverage with the spray, but uh, unfortunately you can see at the bottom of the feet, at the top there, behind the pipes, there's there's a lot of areas where the spray couldn't reach. And so that's why we're going to go in now with Mephiston Red. And I'm going to use a heavy dry brush and just coat everything. So even though we already primed our model, you might be like, why are you doing this? Why not? If, if you're going to do this, why not just do that over the white coat? The reason being because white is such a bright undercoat primer color. If I was a little bit um, lax or not very observant with how my Mephiston Red was going on and I was just trying to paint over the white, chances are I'm, I'm probably going to be just as splotchy and messed up if I, as when I use the spray. So by doing this we kind of hedge our bets and we get that nice bright red base color down and now we're tying the colors in or tying the color into this Mephiston Red and just getting everything to a very almost tomato looking color. Bright red, ruby red, um, and beautiful even coverage. You can see on the shoulder pad, excuse me, on the left shoulder pad there's a little bit of misting, on the, the right shoulder pad there's a little bit of misting. So we really got to just get into all the angles, find all the different angles, and just cover it up with the Mephiston Red. Okay, once we've let that dry, you can see that it, it ties into that dragon red color really, really nicely. So we're going to take Abaddon Black now, and the trick is we're going to be painting silver and gold on in a little while, and we want, we want it to look like it's not painted over a red base coat. So I'm taking my, my Abaddon Black now, and I am painting anything that's going to be silver or gold, starting with these pipes on the top of his armor here. Just covering it all in Abaddon Black. Then the weapon. These giant halberd looking weapons are going to be painted in uh, silver and gold. So painting it all in black now will help if the paint is not uh, covering as well as it should it will not show the red undercoat underneath. Instead it's going to show black, which still is 
you know, not ideal, but it's very, uh, it's much more effective. It's a very effective way of, of uh, transitioning those colors and uh, just tying it all in together. So go with black and uh, cover anything that's going to be silver or gold or anywhere where there's going to be shadows, like under the shoulder pads, right by the arms. Okay, we're making sure we get to all the angles of that halberd. Uh, it's very easy to not turn the model um, backwards and then you miss painting the back of the halberd and then it, it leaves a very poor impression when the back of it is missing some paint. On the um, inside of the forearms, there are going to be some gold vents. So I'm painting in that right there. And I'm painting black all of the uh, joints that connect the leg to the torso. In the upper body too, by the upper arm, you see some uh, tubing leading from the arm to the torso. So we're going to be painting that in black also. A lot of these models, you don't really see the back. So I'm kind of just guessing where the colors are going to be. So. That's where I'm painting all of my Abaddon Black on. Anywhere that I believe I'm going to paint silver. I like the idea of these fellows having uh, armor plates that armor plates that are just covering all of the cybernetic robotic machinery bits. It's uh, very, very cool. Okay, there's that tube I was talking about connecting the upper arm to the body. Very simple, very clean color scheme these Man of War Shock Troopers have. There's not as much extensive uh, detailing as the Exemplar Cinerators did uh, had for the Protectorate of Menoth. And uh, it's nice to paint something, paint something like this every once in a while, where there's just one real primary color and just painting the accents on in different colors. Now for here you can see that I'm painting the back of the shield. The back of the shield is going to be silver. I'm also going to be painting the inside of the barrel and a little bit of the edging and the metallic parts. So our, our guy's helmet does have a grill under the visor, so that's why it's going to be silver, so we're going to paint that black for now. After we've let that dry, we're going to come back with lead belcher and we're going to hit up all the silver areas. So um, the, the halberd everywhere except some of the binding on the head and, and the um, grip. Also, I tried to take the War Machine publicity photos and use that as the uh, basis for how I'm painting all of these silver details. So it's pretty accurate. If you want to look up the Man of War Cinerators, you'll see the front. Uh, the guy that I'm painting right now has these uh, like silver, silver bits right on the top of his foot and uh, his legs. I'm just kind of doing my best guess to lay down the silver paint.
A very easy to miss detail are these screws in the legs and the helmet and the, the armor and the shoulder pieces. So we, we definitely want to make sure we hit that. And now we're painting on the little grill on the back of the armor. I, or I guess it's not a grill, it's like a vent. Almost looks like a furnace vent for an old coal furnace. Where it just hinges open on one side and you throw in the coal. The coal. Kind of like those old-timey cartoons with the trains running on coal energy. And Bugs Bunny opens it up and shovels in more coal to make it go faster. Okay, in a gen as a general rule, in general... Hinges and rivets should be painted silver. Some of the rivets, like the ones on his back or along his stomach, I like to leave in red. But I could see if you wanted to go, if you wanted to go crazy and get all the silver you could on the model, then you could do every individual rivet. All right, continuing to work, we're painting up all the inner workings of the upper arm here, the tubing. Uh, I believe we're also going to get the little cog symbol on the elbow joint. Here we're fixing the back, the pipes that lead into the center of the body. And again, my apologies, the uh, camera is having a hard time focusing when I'm holding the model at a certain angle. And uh, again, if you are trying to um, watch my tutorial and you want to follow along, but with the tutorial music, just click on the link in the description, open it up in a new tab, and uh, that is the music for my tutorials. Here we're working finally on the pipes. That are sticking out the top of his armor here. So most of it is going to be silver and along the front you've got a little vent plate. I call them vent plates. Um, they're the gold plates that have all of the round vents in them, circular vents. But we're still going with the silver and in the back and in the front I believe there are some uh, big screw ports I guess. And there we're painting the cog symbols on the elbows. Very good, very good. And we're painting on the Cador symbol on the left shoulder pad. Hey, is it just me or does that look like the Skaven symbol to you? I don't know. Makes me think Skaven for some reason. That upside down triangle. Or Nurgle. Skaven more though for some reason. I think it's because of the, the uh, diagonal little pieces there on the upper two sides. All right, you've got some more ports in the front for those giant screws on the front of the shoulder pads. Okay, now we're moving on to the weapon. So giant halberd looking thing. We're going to paint all of the naked smooth metal in lead belcher and we're going to paint the axe head itself uh, the binding of uh, for the blade as well as the hand grip is going to be gold I believe we are painting the fingers on his right hand in silver uh, and on the left hand if you can reach it this is something that I noticed from the Man of War shock troopers uh, privateer press pictures that they're for some reason their their gloves have uh, on the back metal plates they're all red but the fingers themselves are all silver here we are working on the blade there
So here we are, just continuing to paint the silver on onto the axe head. And okay, this is a part that's going to be a little, a little time consuming, I think, and that's painting all of these other silver details on like the shield, the edging of the shield here, you see the rim as all these rivets and it's just just a binding uh, surrounding the shield there. So it's uh, a little tricky because whenever you are painting a surface like this, where it's uh, connected to another different colored piece, uh, you got to be careful when you're turning the model around that you are painting all of the angles and you're getting the silver on everywhere it needs to go. So it would hate, uh, I would hate for you to paint up this model and then you show up to the club with it, the gaming club, and um, people who pick it up turn it around and see that you missed some areas on, especially on the shield. The shield is is really, uh, it's really easy to to get lazy there and I'm, I'm really trying not to by cleaning up all the colors, making sure I'm hitting all the angles, just doing everything I can to um, make the paint job as smooth as possible. All right, this is why we paint the back of the shield with Abaddon Black, because when we put that silver on, uh, it's very it's very easy to, I guess, have that paint spread out because it's such a flat surface. So uh, if, that, if your paint pot isn't shaken up really well, it's very, very easy for the paint to kind of split up and, uh, and run on the back of your shield and become all streaky, which we absolutely do not want. Yeah, there we go, painting the fingers in. Yeah, and we're trying to hit all those servos and uh, little access ports for joints. All right, here's a guy, he looks, he's looking pretty good, so um, one of the final pieces is the silver on the grill, his mouthpiece. So, oh yeah, I forgot, around his collar, around his neck protective armor, he's got this, this uh, strip of metal there you can see connecting his neck guard armor piece to the torso piece. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. You're going to have to turn your model around in your hands a little bit because, uh, as you can see, it's uh, covered by the shield. A lot of it is covered by the shield. So we want to make sure we can get all of him there. And yeah, we're just finishing up right now, cleaning all the all the areas off. I don't know why I didn't. I don't think I recorded the gold painting on the Balthazar gold, but very simple. Just that the black part on the head of the axe, the uh, grip for it, the halberd weapon, and anywhere that has a grill, like on right behind his head. Oh, there it is. Okay, I guess I guess I do show it. So there's a little bit of a grill on the shield there. Anytime you paint on a grill like this, especially with the metal paint, you just want to make sure that you uh, spread it out so it doesn't get all clumpy. Yeah, it could very easily get into those little holes in the vents. Okay, so I think the, the video cut so um, this is after doing all of the gold details. We're going to take our Rhinox hide and we're going to water it down or thin it down with Lamian medium. And I'm going to show this to you on a wet palette so that you can see the consistency. But as I'm kind of doing that and describing what I'm doing, uh, because the video card ran out of space, I, I didn't get to show you all of the gold details 
on the model. So on the leg armor, you'll notice that he's got some some extra metallic uh, binding or rims on edging all of his leg armor pieces. So that's going to be in gold. Uh, the shoulder pad rims are also going to be in gold, as well as, like I said, all of the vents there. So the, the vents specifically are, you've got two vents, one on the inner forearm of each of each of his two arms, and uh, the vent grill right behind his head, as well as the vent grill above the um, little barrel on his shield. So what I like to do is I like to put the paint color onto the wet palette first, if, especially if I'm only using one brush. And then I like to go back with uh, uh, just wash it off with a different brush or, or use a different brush and put the, it, uh, the Lamy in medium and just kind of mix it onto the color. The trick is you want to get enough Lamy in medium or thinner if you want to just use regular acrylic paint thinner and you want to mix the paint into that thinner into that Lamy in medium and just get it really really watery and uh, so that when we apply it like this it's almost like a wash but it's more almost like a glaze because it gets into all the cracks and all the crevices and it, it slightly darkens the red color which is good because we'll be able to build it up in the next video. I think this brush that I'm using, this paintbrush that I'm using, it's a giant paintbrush from the Walt Disney Family Museum and I think there might have been some, well, you can see it's really poorly uh, taken care of, uh, which you should never do. I, I think you should always <laughs> take care and maintain your brush. And I was looking for a fat brush that I could really quickly apply this, this wash onto, and the Walt Disney brush is just right there. But yeah, it looks like it's a little bit cloudy, which you wouldn't get that effect if you had a paintbrush that was a little bit cleaner than, than mine is. But that's okay because at the end of it, it's going to look really good. And when it dries anyways, it's just really there to get into the, the corners and the cracks. And then we're going to build up the, the main color, that main red color in uh, the next video. So we want to just get this everywhere into all of the spaces that we can on the weapons. Uh, the weapon on the shield, the back of the shield, and especially on the inner and lower parts of the armor because that's kind of where the, the mud, dirt, and the oil and the grease deposits kind of accumulate. So we're just getting it everywhere. We're turning it in all different directions. And that is it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to finish this guy up in the next video. I've already filmed it and recorded it, and I'm just waiting to... Uh, get this video rendered, uh, voiceover recorded and rendered and put up and then I can get onto that one. But it's a great looking unit and for the Warhammer starter kit it's great that uh, you get such a variety of different figures. So stay tuned to see the end of this one and then we're going to be getting onto a Protectorate of Menoth Warcaster named High, I believe it's High Exemplar, Krios. I don't know all the names, it's, it's like having to learn a whole new language. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. You can check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Also, don't forget to join the Google group, Warbaste 2015 Painting Community. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.